Hey guys, so Corey and I wanted to come on and make a video about a dream that I had yesterday and it kind of ties into the dream that I just made a video on today about speaking and how I'm struggling with speaking and actually this dream that I'm about to share with you is the reason I shared that last dream with you about um, the bomb and going off at the military base. Um, God's just encouraging me to speak and so that's why I made that video earlier and um, so I'm going to try to share some of the stuff that he's been showing me lately. So um, I'm going to start off with the dream and then we're going to kind of give you a few scriptures that um, we were led to last night and today regarding this dream. So yesterday I just said a little prayer um, because I've been struggling and I was like, I don't know what you want me to do, God. Like, do you want me to share things? Like, we're just dealing with a lot of things um, in life right now. Um, a lot of things that you guys, I'm sure, are going through, just normal life decisions you have to make. And, and then you've got dreams and of judgment coming and you're trying to figure everything out. And so I'm like, okay, I'm, I just don't know what I need to do anymore. I'm like kind of lost and need direction. So I was like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Please just guide me and show me what to do. And so he ended up giving me a dream right after I asked that. And, um, and then he also gave me a scripture, which I'll give you after I explain the dream to you. So, um, in this dream, basically I was like a news reporter or an anchor. Um, I had a microphone in my hand and there was a big like studio camera videotaping me and I knew I was on TV. Um, it, it was like a big deal. And in this dream, I don't remember like a specific topic or anything, um, like specific conversations, but I know it was all about Jesus. I was speaking and I was singing both in this dream in the, in the microphone on camera. And I know I was singing and speaking about Jesus, but I don't know specifically what I was saying. Um, I also know that there was somebody else in the dream and I was kind of interviewing them and having a conversation back and forth, forth with them about how Jesus has helped them in their lives. Like, like basically we were sharing testimonies on camera with this person. Um, and then also I remember my mom was watching the, like the, the show or whatever on like a cell phone. Um, so she wasn't watching it live. I was standing with her later after it had happened and, um, she was watching it and she was proud of me. So I think I'm just being shown my mom's proud of what I'm doing are proud of my music, um, proud of, um, all of it. Yeah. Just all <laughs> of it in general. I'm proud of me just speaking up, um, on YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that was the end of the dream. So basically I think I'm just being shown two things, which is what I was asking for before this dream that I need to speak up and that I need to sing about Jesus. And I was being shown that it was reaching many people, that it was being recorded, um, that it was on some kind of device. So personally, I feel like at this point, it's him just showing me that I'm reaching people on YouTube. Um, whether or not I'll literally be on TV, I have no idea. And honestly, I really don't want to be on TV. That's kind of scary. So, um, let's hope that's not literal. Um, but, um, I'm, I, I think he's just saying like, you know, through electronics, I can reach a lot of people and tell them about Jesus and that I need to be doing that. And he's encouraging me to do that. Um, so when I woke up, I was like, Okay, I mean, it was a pretty straightforward dream. Like, I understood what he's trying to say. Um, but I was just curious if he had a scripture to go with it. And ironically, he did. It was, like, totally a dead-on scripture. And I just asked him to lead me in my Bible to a scripture. And so I was just going to open my Bible and um, just show me where to go. So I have it, 
like opened to, I'm not looking at it or anything. And I'm like thinking to myself, okay, how am I going to know where on this page to look? I was thinking that in my head. Um, and then I knew immediately top right corner. So I open it up and ironically, the top right corner is already highlighted. I've already highlighted a verse. And so my eyes go straight to it and it's Matthew 10, 27. Did you want to read it? Yeah. What I tell you in darkness that speak ye in light and what you hear in the ear that preach ye upon the housetops. So in other words, tell everybody what I tell you. He's telling me to speak. And I'm yeah. like, okay, that's exactly what my dream was. So you're telling me in my dream, you're telling me in your word. Like, okay, I got it. <laughs> ask and you so, shall receive. Right. Matthew 7, 7 <laughs> basically says, ask and you'll receive. And I asked him, I'm like, God, what do I do? And he's telling me to speak, you know, and he, mm -hmm. he does respond to us. So um, if you're like ever unsure of what you need to do or you're insecure or you're needing direction, you just need to ask. He's going to tell you. So basically I'm making this video because I think God is showing me to speak and I want to encourage all of you also to speak. Um, that's what we're called to do. Right. And we all have different ways. Um, you know, as Christians, that's what we're called to do. You know, we're called to share the gospel. And so all of us, you know, he'll give us certain ways to share it. You know, we can sing it. We can say it. We can write it. And doesn't mean that everybody has to do all the above, but just share it, you know, and that's encouraging, you know, that she had that dream. It's encouraging for all of us, you know, that we need to share it, you know, with everybody. Um, and a neat verse that um, I, we were both led to was uh, Colossians 3.16. And it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So that's neat because it's about teaching through song, which I feel, you know, she does a lot. And, you know, that the Lord has given her verses and music, you know, to speak to others. And that's really powerful. And then, you know, just on the speaking standpoint, um, you know, if we go to Mark and, um, let's see, what verse is it? It is Mark sixteen fifteen, and it says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, you know, whether it be, uh, speaking, whether it be writing, I, me personally, I'm good at writing. So I like sharing the gospel. I like writing it out, but you know, Either way, this is all, you know, what we're called to do. We're all called to share in our own particular way. Basically, we're being shown to plant seeds by singing or speaking. And, you know, that's what we're called to do is to plant the seed. You know, it's still up to that individual to still... Choose Jesus Christ. Right, right. And then, you know, God will start to show the same thing, ask and you shall receive. But, you know, it's planting that seed. It's, it's encouraging those people. Right. Um, it's kind of like how I explained um, to my family member over Thanksgiving. I, I told him um, my mom planted a seed into me, um, which I wouldn't listen to her. Eventually I did. Um, I prayed. I asked God and I received him because he spoke to me. Um, and then once I, he's gained me as a lost sheep, I'm now in, in, in his hands. Um, now I'm planting the seed in my family members over Thanksgiving. And so it's just kind of like a chain reaction. Like we're called to plant those seeds, even though they might reject it in the moment. Um, that's still what we're called to do. God's still working in those people when we do speak out. Another verse uh, that stuck out to us was Isaiah 55:11. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So God, I, I love this chapter. If you guys ever get a chance, Isaiah 55 is a great chapter. But um, his essentially, his he's saying his promises, which is his word, it won't return to him void. The things that 
I've been struggling with, and I explained it in my last video, um, I'm struggling to share things he's showing me because it's like, okay, God, when is all this going to happen? When, I mean, you've shown me so many dreams about judgment coming or war coming or to the point where I'm like, okay, like, I mean, I know it's coming. I don't want to say I'm doubting God, but no. I'm not doubting him because I know it's going to come. It's just like, I'm just doubting when it's going to come, right. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, um, and I'm, and I try to remind myself every time, like Noah was told judgment was coming for 120 years and he did not know the day until seven days before it happened. Right. So he spent 120 of years, 120 years of his life totally unsure like us right. trying to figure this all out thinking he's nuts waiting and like okay god when i just feel like i know i know that's how noah had to have felt in this moment either way no matter how long it takes for judgment to start and for the tribulation to come and how long we have to put these warnings out um we're called to speak and that's what he's showing me. It doesn't matter. Like, I have to speak. Whether it's through song or, a you know, a YouTube video, I'm called to speak. Um, Ezekiel 33, many of you are familiar with that chapter. And if you're not, go read it. It's a great chapter. It essentially says that when the sword comes, and I've literally seen a sword in the heavens in a dream before, we're called to warn about that sword coming. We're called to warn about judgment coming. If we warn and they don't accept it, then... They're responsible for their own blood. Right. So, but as watchmen, whenever we get anything from the Lord, that's what we're supposed to do is to warn. We're supposed to speak. And there's like, there's so many days, like, you know, I don't, I haven't made videos about how we feel, but there's so many days where I don't, I don't want to speak. Yeah. <laughs> like, on, honestly, um, I'm going to be totally honest here. Like, we've both said to God, please don't tell us anything. Like we don't <laughs> want to know it's, anymore. It's like hard. it's hard to emotionally deal with some of the stuff he tells us and know that we need to speak and know the reaction we're going to get. And, um, it's just, it would be easier to not know. It would be easier to be in denial like the rest of the world. Right. But, <laughs> and that's why we're separated from the world. Right. And that's why God's <laughs> rolling his eyes right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're like, either way, um, in Ezekiel 33, it says, it talks about blowing the trumpet. And I heard a trumpet and I think it was on 714 or 715 of 2016. And it was the day that Trump announced Pence as his vice president. And I know most of you already know this, but the trumpets, trumpets, it's like a play on the trumpets are sounding like God is coming. Um, and I literally heard a trumpet surround me in my room that day. So I, I thought it was the rapture. I like run outside thinking that was it, you know, back in 2016. Um, because it was totally supernatural. It was around me inside my room. Like, it's not like I heard, a semi truck horn go off right. like it was in my room like you know when there's a sound inside your house and when there's a sound outside your house so it was totally spiritual and i thought it was a rapture but maybe that was god just saying i'm blowing the trumpet i'm returning judgment's coming um wake up child and you need to start speaking um here's your watchman call here's your you and your husband need to start talking right uh, and i also wanted to share my dream uh because i had one too and it just kind of goes with her singing and it was me i this was a couple months ago and i was in a large crowd and i just started singing i busted out in song and when i was singing i thought to myself wow, I sound amazing. You know, it was like majestic. I I don't sing at all. I I wouldn't say I'm tone deaf. I wouldn't go that far. I'm just... He sounds like Justin Bieber. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. No. <laughs> Do not. Okay, let's just put it this way. I can't sing like her. I don't have that gift. So, in this dream... I could sing, and it was amazing like her. There's hope! <laughs> so, but what that said to me is, you know, that was me singing in heaven. 
because I can't sing how I did in that dream. And it just brought everybody together. You know, it was the same thing. I started singing, everybody started joining in, and it was a song like Amazing Grace. You know, everybody just came in and started singing, and there's this big, huge, just like little mini concert that just started happening. So we just wanted to make this video to encourage you guys to speak out however you feel called to speak out. It doesn't need to be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't need to be in song. You could write a book. You could write poems to share. You could write letters to people. You could, I mean, there's so many ways. Facebook, which I don't have, but maybe you do. Right. Um, there's so many ways to just share about Jesus. Um, and I think the focus needs to be your testimony because as much as we know Jesus is returning and judgment's coming, people don't want to hear that. And that is not the gospel message. So, you know, those things are for the body of Christ, um, to know those things. So if you're sharing with non-believers, it needs to be more about how to be saved. Like, um, you're saved through, uh, your faith and speak about how Jesus has helped you overcome sin. Things like that um, need to be our priority and focus to help bring family members to Christ. Right, absolutely. So our testimony can save. And so that's why we have- Yeah, in Revelation it says, you're saved by the word of your testimony right. or um, something like that. So, I mean, it, it's so crucial because people can relate to that. They can relate to sin and overcoming. They want to overcome sin because it destroys their life. So right. if you're giving your testimony on how God has helped you overcome something, that's relatable. You right. know, people don't want to hear that judgment's coming. No. I mean, we need to obviously speak that, but, um, I've just learned that. What is that saying? You catch more, is it bees with honey? You catch more What's that saying? You catch more bees with honey or I not heard. bees. You catch more something with honey, whatever. <laughs> the point is like you want to give them n not, I mean, I don't want to say like you don't, you don't want to give them like an ear tickling message. That's not what I'm trying to say, but you want it to be sweet in the sense that there is a savior, right? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a lamb still. So that is sweet. When he's a lion, it's not so sweet anymore. So we do need to keep speaking about the the lamb that has come to save right. and was slain for you um, versus judgment's coming, you're all going to die uh, kind of a message, you know, like right. and I just, our family has just reacted so much more positive when we just share with, with them how God has helped us in our lives. Right. They react totally different. So... That's just my personal experience and my advice to anyone trying to share Jesus with people. Right. Yeah. And just keep speaking. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys.